Good evening, Zion Lutheran Church. Today is Maundy Thursday, and it's normally my favorite time of the year to worship in church, and we can't worship in our church building right now. Uh, and so I will try to get through this service, but I might be a little bit emotional. If you could join me, we'll begin with Vespers on page 229. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, Lamb of our salvation. Our psalm will be Psalm 116, beginning at verse 12. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first hymn we sing this evening is hymn number 445, When You Woke That Thursday Morning. When you woke that Thursday morning, Savior, teacher, faithful friend, thoughts of self and safety scorning, knowing how the day would end. Lamb of God, foretold for ages, now at last the hour had come when but one could pay sin's wages you assume their dreadful sum never so alone and lonely longing with tormented heart to be with your dear ones only for a quiet hour apart sinless lamb and fallen creature one last paschal meal to eat one last lesson as their teacher washing your disciples feet what was there you could that you could give them that would never be outspent what great gift that would outlive them what last will and testament show me and the world you love me know me as the lamb of god do this in re Membrance of me, eat this body, drink this blood. One in faith and love united, one, all one body, you the head. When we meet by you invited, you are with us as you said one with you and one another in a unity sublime seeing us your sister brother one in every place and time one day all the church will capture that bright vision glorious 
and your saints will know the rapture that your heart desired for us. When the longed-for peace and union of the greatest and the least meet in joyous, blessed communion in your never-ending feast. We continue with the Old Testament lesson for Maundy Thursday, which comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 24. Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the rules. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and twelve pillars, according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the people of Israel, who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen to the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he threw against the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people. And they said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do, and we will be obedient. And Moses took the blood and threw it on the people and said, Behold the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Then Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and the seventy of the elders of Israel went up, and they saw the God of Israel. There was under his feet, as it were, a pavement of sapphire stone, like the very heaven for clearness. And he did not lay his hand on the chief men of the people of Israel. They beheld God and ate and drank. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from St. John's Gospel, the 13th chapter. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God, and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments, and taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but afterwards you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, The one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you, for he knew who was to betray him. That was why he said, Not all of you are clean. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should also just you sh- also should do just as I have done to you. A new commandment I give to you that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing the Lenten Responsory on page 231. Deliver me, O Lord my God, for you are the God of my salvation. Rescue me from my enemies, protect me from those who rise against me. 
In you, O Lord, do I put my trust. Leave me not, O Lord my God. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. Deliver me, O Lord my God, for you are the God of my salvation. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. At this time in the service, we would ordinarily collect our offerings to the Lord, and we can still offer uh, offer our offerings uh, to the Lord through technology. We have an e-transfer system uh, so that you can be set up for direct deposits, or you can send in e-transfers uh, to ZL Yorkton at sasktel.net. Uh, I'll put the, the email address in the, the comments under underneath so that uh, no mistakes are made. We continue, however, with the sermon for today. <clears throat> Dearly beloved, mark these words from St. John's Gospel. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and, taking a towel, tied it around his waist. This is our text. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. If we are being honest with ourselves, many of us must confess that at least once in our lives, we have had the thought, why keep going on? Why keep living? Why bother going through the anxiety and the pain and the burdens of life? Already, this period of lockdown has led to an increase in people taking their own lives. As a pastor, I have to be aware of these sorts of feelings in the community, and I know that for myself on occasions like that in my own life, there has always been the unspoken logic of my brain. I deserve to be happy all the time, and if it's not reasonable that I'll be happy the majority of the time, then why bother? Beloved, this way of thinking is pure selfishness embodied. It is twisted, sin-sickened logic. It is a devilish form of self-worship, where our own pleasure is the God to which all else in life, even our own biological existence, must then be sacrificed if necessary. And it's sometimes how we think, because we are spoiled, rotten. But we are humans. We are sinners. And our sins make us more selfish and more foolish the longer we indulge in them. When we are caught in the toilet bowl logic, as my mother calls it, swirling around ourselves that all this inwardness produces, we really need someone to shake us awake. We need a cold bucket of water to dunk our heads in. We need to be reminded of the real reason for living. The reason I begin our Maundy Thursday sermon with such dark thoughts is because some have even condemned our Lord Jesus of being suicidal. Pardon me. Some have said derisively, here is Jesus on the night when he was betrayed and he knew what was going to, he knew who was going to betray him and he could have escaped that death if he had only acted differently. So was he giving in to despair? Was he deciding that there was no real reason left for living? To leave you with no doubt right away, no, that was not what he was thinking. But how do I know that? Well, look at St. John's Gospel, chapter 13, verse 1. One of my favorite verses in the whole Bible, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Jesus knew his death was ahead of him. He knew the pains of Good Friday that he would face, but he chose to go on with it. Stop for a moment and think about that. On Maundy Thursday, Jesus chose to love you. He saw the pain and the death that would be required, and he said, you were worth dying for. You were worth going through it all for. That he would rather go through death and hell if it meant you could have peace with God than take the cowardly escape from his duty and his calling. 
Jesus, having loved you every day of his life, decided that even if tomorrow was his last day, then he would live it and die it in love for you. Why does the soldier choose to get up and run out into danger? Why does the doctor and the nurse step out their door and risk their lives in a pandemic? Because there are worse things than death. If we are Christians, then we must believe that the, what the Bible teaches. We must hold to the truth that we are all going to live forever. We will all stand before God and some will depart to eternal judgment and some to eternal bliss. That for those of us who belong to Jesus, who trust in him for forgiveness and new life, that all of our time here and now is not our own and was never our own. At the start of the sermon, I talked about the suicidal logic of self-worship, of pleasure-seeking, and now I direct you to our sermon text. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and, taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Let's all stop and take a second to comprehend the depth of that verse. Write it down on a piece of paper if you have to. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going back to God. You can stop right there, even. Look at Jesus' way of living. He sees pain. He sees death. And what does Jesus think? Does Jesus think, well, if this means no more sporting events or buffets at the casino, then forget this. No, Jesus is moved by love and gratitude. Jesus has perspective, and this leads to service. I'm going to say this once more so that I, I don't screw it up. Jesus is moved by love and gratitude. Jesus has perspective, and this leads to service. Jesus sees pain and death tomorrow, and he thinks, I am loved. The Father has loved me. The Father has given all things into my hands. Dearly beloved, look at all that God has put into your hands. Look back on your lives, on every smile, on every kind word, on every bit of sunshine and joy and laughter. Every one of us has been given more by our loving Father than we have ever deserved. Jesus has gratitude. Look at all the times in the Gospels where Jesus gives thanks to the Father, even when he doesn't have enough, even when he is facing pain and death. Jesus' first words to God are, thank you. Jesus knows where he came from. He knows his calling. He knows why God sent him into this world. John records that Jesus, knowing he had come from God and was going back to God, he served. Jesus sees the pain and suffering, but how does Jesus process it? He just zooms out. He just looks at it from a bigger perspective. Even facing his own death, Jesus turns it into a teaching moment for us. How do you look at disappointment? How do you look at pain? How do you look at fear? Jesus shows us, you remember that you came from God. God has made me and all creatures. He has given me body and soul, my reason and all my senses, and still takes care of them. Didn't you learn that in confirmation? I did. So remember it. God made me. I didn't make me. I'm not in charge. God is in charge. And he has given me this life. And where are we headed? Jesus knows that he is going back to God, John records. See how immediately things change when you change the perspective. Jesus isn't saying, well, I just had dinner and next I'm going to get arrested and put to death tomorrow. Jesus is saying, I have come from God and I am going back to God and I have a job to do in the meantime. For that is the final part of our passage. Jesus has the proper perspective. I've come from God and I'm going back to God, so I'm going to live for God. And he puts on the towel and he washes the disciples' feet. This Holy Week, let us pause right here and right now and remind ourselves of that. We are created by God. He baptized us into the family of God. He gives us salvation by faith alone in Jesus Christ. And now he sends us out into our calling. And our calling in life is not to have pleasure. It is to be a reflection of God's love in a hurting world. It is to help our neighbor who needs our help, not ourselves. Not to help ourselves. That's what Jesus did. That's what Jesus lived. 
He looked death in the face. Jesus said to himself, I will worry about dying tomorrow. And tonight I'm going to wash my disciples' feet. Jesus, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. He loved us to the uttermost. This Maundy Thursday, we remember that the night before Christ would bear the nails for us, he bore the dirt and the stink of his disciples' feet under his fingernails as he got down on the ground and served them like a slave. Jesus teaches us something radical here, that in light of eternity, in light of the fact that we are all heading back to God, what matters the most? Pleasure? No. Love. Service. Self-giving. Soldiers don't get medals for hiding from danger and shirking responsibilities. When the tapes are played, no one will be celebrating how safe, pleased, or rich they were. When we are sitting with the poor saints in Christ's kingdom, we will find in light of eternity that those moments that tried us the most, that tested us the hardest, were where we were most tempted with the agonizing questions of why bother and what's the point, these will be the moments where we truly shone. These will have been the times where we loved our children who needed it, where we cared for our parents who needed it, where we comforted those who were afraid, where we put ourselves second or third, where we in great weakness were tiny mirrors and reflections of the love Jesus showed us that Maundy Thursday. For that is why it is called Maundy Thursday. Important though the sacrament is, as much as we do miss it and as much as we do remember that it was this night that Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper, the Maundy, that word, means the mandate of Jesus. And the mandate we commemorate this Thursday night is not to commemorate the sacrament, to celebrate the sacrament, but rather to love one another as Jesus has loved us. I have titled this sermon, The Reason for Living, because on Maundy Thursday, as Jesus faced his death, he shows us the real reason for living. The joy of living comes from knowing that God has loved us into existence. The hope of living is that because of Jesus' works, we will be forgiven and saved and stand before God righteous and holy in heaven, that we are going back to God and that he loves us. And so the real reason for living is to share this love with others. There are worse things than pain and death. There is cowardice. There is lovelessness. There is selfishness and the shame that comes when this is all revealed. Let us be thankful that God has given us the faith to see that he has made us. He has given us all the things that we need and we are going back to him. Let us not show up empty handed as it were. Let us not show up embarrassed because we only cared about ourselves. Let's have the courage like our Lord Jesus had, to face the challenges of life, knowing that the glory will outweigh the temporary pains and troubles that we face. May our loving Savior, who has baptized your soul from head to feet in his love and forgiveness, guard and keep you in his love. And may we all live as Jesus called us to, by his grace and in his name we pray. Amen. In place of a canticle for worship, we'll turn to hymn number 430. And we'll try and sing a few stanzas of hymn number 430. My song is love unknown, my Savior's love to me. Love to the loveless shown that they might lovely be. Oh, who am I that for my sake my Lord should take frail flesh and die? He came from his blessed throne, salvation to bestow, but man made strange and none the long for Christ would know. But, O oh, my friend, my friend indeed, who had my need his life did spend. Sometimes they strew his way, and his sweet praises sing, resounding all the day hosannas to their king. 
Then crucify is all their breath, and for his death they thirst and cry. Why, what hath my Lord done? What makes this rage and spite? He made the lame to run, he gave the blind their sight. Sweet injuries, yet they at these themselves displease against him rise. They rise and needs will have my dear Lord made away. A murderer, they save the prince of life, they slay. Yet cheerful he to suffering goes, that he his foes from thence might free. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray the collect for Maundy Thursday, even though we do not celebrate the sacrament tonight. O oh Lord, in this wondrous sacrament, you have left us a remembrance of your passion. Grant that we may so receive the sacred mystery of your body and blood, that the fruits of your redemption may continually be manifest in us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the prayer of the church. Heavenly Father, on this holy night, we remember the Passover of your ancient people, fulfilled in your Son's gift of the New Testament in his blood. Be gracious to us and bless us. Remember not our sins and transgressions, for they have all been blotted out by the blood of Christ Jesus, our Passover lamb. Forgive us and create in us new and contrite hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, give wisdom and understanding and boldness to all preachers of the word during these holy days and hard times, that their preaching and teaching would edify your children and move them to faithfully meditate upon the passion of your Son, through which they have eternal salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, strengthen all our sister churches throughout the world who celebrate the mystery of your son's Passover in these your son's Passover and those Christians who are unable to gather together. Where there is distress, bring consolation. Where there is strife, bring forgiveness. Where there is suffering, bring help. And where there is persecution, bring freedom and joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember those who are sick, those who are in the hospital. We remember especially tonight Art and Jeanette and also Sylvia, uh, one of our elders, uh, Robert, his, his mother. So we remember all of these folks in our prayers tonight. Compassionate Father, remember all who suffer in body or soul. Most especially do we implore your mercy to stay your hand and drive away plague and pestilence. Spare us and those for whom we pray, especially Art, Jeanette, and Sylvia, and for all those we now name in the silence of our hearts. For all these, we pray that you would bring comfort and peace, Lord. Comfort us in our trials and enliven our faith in Christ, our only hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, your Son instituted this most blessed sacrament to eat and to drink. 
that what is promised in his testament may be truly received by his friends and heirs. Have mercy on all who are kept from your table in these extraordinary circumstances, and do not shut them out of, the su of your supper forever. Let the words of this testament echo in their ears and hearts, and in true faith, let them believe these words, trusting that they receive spiritually in faith exactly what your Son has both won and declared, the forgiveness of sins. Stir up in us a desire to commune with our fellow Christians on your true body and blood, and bring us soon to the table. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, and whatever else you know we need, O oh Lord, we entrust to your loving care and ask for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us pray for peace. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. A blessed Easter.